There are a number of different tools and views that we can use within Sage 200 Professional to allow us to produce a cash flow forecast. There's probably a number of things we want to review before we start producing it, and we can use things like our summaries to do this. Within our sales summary, we can see who owes us money, what debts are outstanding, and which customers that sits with, as well as being able to drill down to the transactions themselves. We can review our worst payers and allow ourselves to make decisions around credit control and even access our credit control workspaces directly from within our summaries dashboard. Within our credit control workspace, I'm able to review more than one set of information. I can see my customer list of who owes me money, the transactions that relate directly to the outstanding balance, and even the notes associated with those transactions, hopefully regarding promised payments from those customers. This is important when I'm looking to produce my cash flow forecast because I know I need to in which entries I need to include and which entries I need to exclude from the forecast. Equally, I can do the same for my purchases. And within my financial summary, I can even get a view on my current VAT liability potentially needing to be paid within this forecast period and also my current bank position. Within my sales order processing and purchase order processing, I may also need to make some checks and reviews on what needs to be included. By simply applying to filter to any list view, I can sort out the information that I want. In this case, I want to include any orders that have been dispatched, but not yet invoiced in my um, cash flow forecast. It's very easy to build a list view we simply say what we want to include, in this case, which column, what the condition is, and what the filter I'm applying. Lists can be saved and stored and be made available to other users simply by ticking the public box. So I'm going to filter for orders dispatched, not yet invoiced, and I can output that information or select which items from this list I want to output to be included in my forecast. Equally, I may want to generate my purchase accruals. To do this, I can go either via the purchase order processing map or via the options within the menu or simply search for order accruals. Go into my order accrual and the system will prompt me as to which transactions have been received but not yet had an invoice matched to them. And I could even post the relevant nominal journals, including the reversal, all from the same screen. I'm going to output these to Excel so that I've got this information to add into my cash flow forecast. The next thing I need to check before I do anything, as well as checking my bank account's been reconciled, I also need to check that all direct debits and standing orders which need to be included on the system have already been posted. I could process direct debits and standing orders and choose up to which date I want to include them. Or I could simply select the ones I want to check. In this case, my rent and rates, and I can review when that's been posted up to. So I can see that all postings up to April have been completed already. I could continue to check the others, or again, I could process them. Again, using workspaces, I could review our current cash position, and this functionality has been in Sage for a long time. 
I can choose which account, review which transactions are owed to me and who I owe, and equally when I need to pay them, all from one screen. In more recent versions of SAGE 200 though, you've been able to produce a short-term cash flow projection directly within SAGE 200 Professional. The data that's included is the information that's stored within SAGE. So I can choose that I want to produce this forecast for the next month. I can choose which bank accounts I want to include. Based on that direct debit and standing order information, I can choose which forecasted payments I include, which regular receipts I include, and equally any payments or receipts which are due to be paid out to my or received in from customers and suppliers. If I choose my regular payments, the system will include any which are not on query, but I can choose any that I want to exclude. Perhaps I've been um, received um, notification that I'm not going to be getting um, an electricity direct debit in the next 30 days. Equally, I could choose forecasted receipts and choose which customers I want to include. But I've also been told um, by my customers that they're going to make some payments to me that aren't appearing in this window. So I can add those in manually in a second. To make manual adjustments, all I will do is choose to add at the bottom here. I'm going to set today's date as the forecast date because that's when I'm creating it. And my customers told me they're going to pay me by next Tuesday for some invoices, which I've still got on query with them. I can specify the amount that they're going to pay. And add another entry if I want to. So perhaps I want to include the wages payment I'm going to have to pay later in the month. And equally, perhaps I've got a PAYE and I to pay. Once manual entries are made within this screen, they're stored in the system. So I could choose, if I wanted to, to include those accruals for goods received, not yet invoiced, in my cash flow projection stored in the system or equally I may want to share this with the wider business and then this is my known information so I'm going to export this out the system will then store the transactions that I selected deselected and added manually and perhaps I want to distribute this to the wider business to allow me to share the information that I know about within SAGE but perhaps operational aspects of the business have got a better idea of what we can include in terms of goods and services that we've already completed. So I could simply paste in the information extracted out. and then add in the extra information before I share this with the wider team. Total of the information I want to include and because it's a payment, multiply by minus one to deduct it. And as I've only got one entry there, 
and simply select the value. I can then use Excel functions to total up my new forecast and share that out with the wider team to make sure that we're happy that this is what our position looks like. <laughs>